Is the real estate recession here? And if so, what are you going to do about it as a real estate agent? Times are getting a little weird. Houses are staying on the market longer and longer. And if interest rates keep going up, some people predict houses won't be selling at all. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my plan on how to beat the recession and survive as a real estate agent. Let's dive right into the video. My name is Chris with the Empire of Real Estate YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. As my gift to you, I want to give you my free YouTube thumbnail template to get you started with your YouTube channel and start building your brand. This comes with four templates to get started with your first month's videos and get your YouTube channel up and running. So if you want that template, click the link down below and download that and you can edit it in Canva and start posting videos right away. Let's dive right into the video. The real estate market is getting weird and some agents are getting scared, but it's not the time to be scared. It's the time to take action. It's the time to go out there and take control of your business and your destiny. Because if you don't do this, you might end up back at a nine to five job that you don't like, but you must know that this is totally in your control. Sure. The real estate market is not in your control. The interest rates is not in your control, but your business is in your control. You can't control those variables, but you can control how much you do certain activities that will increase the odds of getting more sales, even in a down market or a slower market. So in this video, I want to share those things with you so you can start practicing those things every day and kind of get into a better state where your business is throwing off consistent income checks. That's what we all want. Number one is prospecting. We all need to prospect, but before we can prospect, we need to get control of our schedule. So I'm going to cross out number one and we're going to make it time blocking. Okay. Time blocking is the most important thing because as a real estate agent, we all have personal lives. We all have things and obligations that we have to attend to. And the day seems to just run away without us. And this happens a lot. So if you can time block, then your schedule is going to kind of be a lot more organized. And then you're going to be able to time block prospecting and different, you know, advertising and marketing venues that you can do and activities that you can do to bring in revenue for your business. So time blocking can be really complex or it can be really simple. When you start out, I would recommend time blocking at an hour at a time. So you want to time block every hour of the day for your work day and you want to fill out your calendar. And if you have an open space, that's okay. You can fill it up with something or you can leave it open but you want to time block the most important critical activities that you need to complete every single day to have a productive day and to move the ball forward and to get one step closer to your goals. So the very first thing you want to do is time block prospecting. Prospecting can be very, very simple. All you need to do is get a basic lead generation tool. We recommend Vulcan seven. It's probably the most cost effective way to get started with prospecting. And if you want to check that out, check out the affiliate link down below. Uh, we definitely recommend them. And that's what we use on our real estate team. But prospecting can be a variety of things. It could be door knocking. It can be cold calling. It can be calling expired listings for sale by owners. It could be calling buyer leads that you're paying for. There are a ton of ways to prospect and there's really no right or wrong way. You just have to run your numbers and then do the one that fits your business the best. Number two is you want to cut all expenses that are not producing an ROI for your business. Now, what I mean by this is if you have buyer leads or you have different lead services that just aren't converting into sales and they're just not really profitable, I would cut those out because when we go into recessions, everything tends to tighten up and you want to keep your cash reserves and your savings account. Now, with that being said, you always want to invest in things that are helping your business grow. So for example, if you have a buyer lead source and you're putting $500 a month into it, but you're closing two deals and you net, you know, $12,000 from that, that's extraordinary. And I would not cut that lead source. 
But if you've been buying that same lead source for months and months and months and months, and you're doing all the things that you need to be doing to convert those leads, like calling them as soon as they come into your website, um, following up, doing multiple touches, sending them emails, doing all this stuff, and it's just not working, well, it's time to question that lead source. If you put $6,000 or $12,000 from paying this month after month after month, and you haven't got a single closing from it, it's time to take a step back, reflect, and see if it's worth it, right? Maybe you can take that money and put it somewhere else. Maybe you could take that money and do something different with it that's gonna actually produce an ROI for your business. Because the worst thing you can do is waste money on things that don't produce revenue and profit for your real estate business. Number three is all about the social media game. And I know a lot of agents are reluctant to put their very first video out there and to kind of put themselves out there for people to critique and judge. But I promise you, people don't judge like you think. People don't care like you think. And the agents that I see doing very well in my market with low ad spend and that aren't spending, you know, a lot of money on advertising and marketing are the ones that are using social media to their advantage. Some of the these agents that I see out there that are absolutely crushing it in my market are hardly spending any money. They're just putting their time into creating videos, to creating marketing, to getting their face out there. And the best thing about social media is you can create this stuff and you can edit it and you can post it and that stuff reaches more people than you know. And the best thing is there are multiple different platforms. So you can do Instagram content, you can do YouTube content, you can do TikTok content. Now, I suggest that you get on YouTube because YouTube is one of the biggest search engines that are out there aside from Google and YouTube is actually owned by Google. So as far as videos go, if you wanna get found, I would definitely do YouTube. Also, you can make evergreen content on YouTube. And what that basically means is when you post a video, is it, it can stay getting views, getting traffic, getting new clients for your business month after month after month. And that's the beauty of YouTube is if you do the right videos, if you learn how to engage the audience and you get a high audience retention rate, you're going to be in a really good spot because it compounds month after month after month. It's kind of like the idea of rental properties, right? But with video, you're gonna keep getting those views and views and views. So imagine it like this. You po post your first three videos and everything is slow. You post your next four videos. Say so you do one a week, right? Then you do another four videos. Then you do another four videos. And then one of those videos catches traction. Say all the other ones got like five, six, seven views, which they don't have to do that because you can share them on Facebook, you can share them on LinkedIn, you can share them on all these other platforms and you can get more views. But let's just say you did none of that and say one of the videos took off in the algorithm and it's getting consistently, even let's be conservative, let's say we get 35 to 40 views a day, right? We're, we get a low video, but it's chugging along, it's getting traffic. What's gonna happen is, is people that click that video and they like what you have to say and they're kind of curious, like, hey, who's this real estate agent? Maybe I should use them to sell my house or maybe I should use them to buy my house. They're gonna go to all your other videos on your channel, look through your video catalog, and they might sit on there and they might watch, you know, five, six, seven videos. And they're gonna say, wow, I really like this agent a lot. This agent is taking time. They're sharing a lot of knowledge. They seem like they really know what they're talking about. They have a good personality. And before you know it, this person feels like they already know you and you're getting a call like, hey, how you doing? I saw your YouTube channel. I'd love to work with you. I'm looking for XYZ property or I'm looking to sell this property. And I know this works because so many agents do it. So many agents are having success with it. And some of my real estate friends are having success with it, right? So you can do this. You just have to have the courage to press record and launch your first couple videos. And as time goes on, you're gonna get more comfortable and more comfortable and more comfortable. And things are just gonna get really good because you're gonna be able to build a content machine that generates you leads, generates you revenue, 
for your business and becomes a real asset to your real estate company. So I highly suggest you get involved with social media, especially in times of recession and times of uncertainty. You want to put yourself out there into the marketplace and really attract people to you because we have pillar one, which is time blocking. You're going to get your schedule in line because you have to be prepared and you have to be consistent. Number two, we have prospecting because you want to basically actively go out there and find people to work with for your business. But then we want to build this third pillar, which is really the big asset. And that's your content machine that's going to basically feed your real estate business for years and years to come. So if you like this kind of content, definitely smash the like button and subscribe. And if you're more curious about the social media aspect of things, I'm coming out with a series where I'm going to revamp my team YouTube channel, not this YouTube channel. It's a YouTube channel that I made back in 2019 and it's pretty much dead. It has 36 subscribers and I'm going to show you how I take that from 36 subscribers, maybe one or two views a day, all the way up to a successful channel that's generating leads for my business and basically turn it into an asset for my real estate team. So definitely tune in for that. And if you want to watch that content, subscribe and check out that playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have an awesome day.